In this video, I'm going to cover the exact steps that I took to design the cut file that we used in the last video to customize our shirts. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette and you've found your way to Silhouette success. If you haven't yet, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe buttons. Don't forget the notification bell. YouTube will let you know every time I upload a tutorial and we can keep on crafting together. If you are ready to get started, go ahead and open up your Silhouette Studio software in a split screen and you can follow along. Let's do this. When you open your Silhouette Studio, you're going to have a blank canvas that looks like this. The first thing I like to do when I'm trying to replicate a design is to bring that design into my open page. So I'm going to click on File, head down to Merge, click on that, it'll bring up all of my files. I'm going to find the design that I want to replicate, double click, and it will bring it onto the mat. I'm going to move that just off to the side so I can see what I'm doing, but it's not really in my way. Let's scooch everything over. There we go. Now this particular design is made of all text elements. So we're going to head over to the left. The capital A here is what we want. We're going to click on that. We're going to click on the design mat and that will bring up a cursor and we can start typing. If you click off of that, you can get rid of your cursor, but you need to click back on it to modify the actual text. So I'm going to come up here and change my color. This first box is your fill color. The second box is your outline color. So let's change the fill color to red. And now it's the right color, but the wrong font. So we're going to go to the right hand side and click on the capital A over there. That opens your textile panel and it will show you all of the fonts that you have installed on your computer. For this particular design, I use PN Boogie Woogie and it's in my recently used fonts. If I did not see it here, but I knew the name of the font that I wanted, I could come up to the top, double click and type in PN Boogie Woogie, hit enter and it would change it. But for right now, since it's right here, I'm just going to click on that and it changes the text to the font that we want. I can bring it up to the top, grab this bottom corner here, double click and pull on the mouse pad and it will size it. Now, for this design, we need three of these in total. You can do this by um, right clicking on the element that you wanna duplicate. That'll bring up this box of options and right here is duplicate. You can click on that and you can bring it down to where you want it. Or if the item that you want to duplicate has been selected and you can tell by the bounding box, the square around it means that it has been selected. You can come up top to this icon and click on that and it will duplicate for you. And the nice thing about doing it this way is if you need to duplicate and have multiple copies, of something, you can just keep clicking and it will just keep making more and more and more. The other way you have to um, right click and then choose duplicate over and over again. So now we have too many copies. We're just going to select these bottom two and right click and delete them. All right, so now we have three exact copies of the same thing. We need the second and third elements to be different colors. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to make the second one slightly lighter in color. And we're going to make the third one even lighter than that. Okay, now we have three of the same element, but in different colors. The next thing we wanna do is make sure they are all lined up. So we can select all of them at one time come up to this button on the top. This is part of your transform panel. The transform panel is also over here. If you click on this, it brings up a lot more options that you can choose from. But for what we need today, we're just going to use the top button here. And this first option will align everything to the left. Once you click on that, they're all lined up perfectly and we're ready to go. Our next step is going to be to stack all three of these so they look like our um, inspiration design. So we're just going to bring this one up until it looks about right. 
and I messed up my alignment. So we're going to have to redo that in just a minute. Let's get that one lined up. Let's get this one lined up. Now I'm just kind of winging this. If you want to be absolutely precise, you can use the grid, but we're just kind of um, running with it today. Okay, so when I move them up, they may or may not have gotten out of line, so I'm going to select them all and redo that part. And I think that looks very similar to our inspiration. Now we're going to open up the Modify panel, and the function we're going to be using today is Subtract All. But before we do that, we need to make sure that our elements are in the right order. You want to make sure that you have the bottom one all the way to the back. So we're going to, and this one has to be behind the top one. So let's select the second one and we're going to right click and we're going to send it to the back. You can see now the top one is overlapping the middle one and we want the middle one to be overlapping the bottom one. So we're going to select the bottom one, right click and send that to back. Now our elements are in the right stack order so that we can um, modify them. So you're going to click on the top one, you're gonna hold down your shift key and click on the second one. Now they're both selected at the same time. We can go over and click on subtract all. And if we click back on the top element, we can lift it up a little bit and you can see that it made the cut out of the top of this. We're going to click the undo button and that will move the top element right back where it should be. Now we're going to select the second one and the bottom one together by holding down the shift key. We're going to come over and we're going to hit subtract all again. Once that's finished, you can pull down the bottom be mine and you can see that it has also been cut away. Perfect. We're going to hit the undo button and put that right back where it belongs. The next thing we need to do is recreate Valentine. So we're going to click on our text button over on the left. We're going to click on the mat. It will bring up our cursor and we can go ahead and type Valentine. Click off of it to get rid of the cursor. Select it. We're going to choose our fill color. That's going to be red like the top, be mine. And now it's the right color, but we need to pick our font. So head over to the text style panel, the capital A on the right hand side. And for this one, I used Hey Butterfly. So let's click on that. And it has changed the font to Hey Butterfly. The next thing we need to do is resize Valentine. So I'm going to double click on this corner here and just pull down a little bit and that will resize Valentine for me. If you pull this over to the side here and compare, you can see that this one is on a slant and we need to get ours slanted. So when an element is selected, you see the bounding box around it, that means it's selected. There's also a green dot up above there. When you hover over it, your um, arrow turns into kind of a curved arrow. That's what you want. When it looks like that, you can double click and pull to the side and it will tilt whatever element is selected. Now that Valentine is slanted, we can bring it over on top of the bottom B mine and get it lined up to where we want it. That looks pretty good. And the next step we want to take is to create an offset around Valentine. The offset panel is located here on the right hand side. It's the little star with the outline around it. So let's click on that. We're going to choose offset. Go ahead and click that. And that will bring up your distance. This is a distance of 0 0.020. And that's a decent offset for what we're doing. So we're just going to leave that alone and we're going to click apply. 
Now, once I clicked apply, you can see that now there are several bounding boxes. We want all of that grouped together. So what I usually do is I go down to the bottom corner here and you can see my, my selector has changed to a little up down arrow. When it looks like that, go ahead and right click and you will find the option right here to group. Go ahead and group all of those pieces together. Then you can click off of it. You wanna go in and drag away the original Valentine and you're left with just the outline. At this point, we wanna select the outline of Valentine and the bottom B mine element. You have to hold shift. So select one, hold shift, and then select the other. Now they're both selected. We're going to go back to the modify panel and we are going to subtract all. You can pull the outline away. We don't really need that anymore. And we can move the solid Valentine in there. And what we did um, by creating that outline around Valentine, when we made that offset and then cut it, we gave ourselves a little bit of wiggle room to get the word Valentine inside of Be Mine just a little bit better. It'll just make pressing it a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and delete this. We don't need it anymore. What I did was right click and then scroll up and delete. Our design now looks exactly like the inspiration design and we can continue forward um, just using what we have created. So let's get rid of this right click and delete. We need to get our design set up to be cut now. The first thing you wanna do is group the same colors together. So we're going to choose the top be mine. We're going to hold down the shift key, select Valentine, right click and group. The other colors are already grouped. So they, they're all set to be cut. Let's move everything back for just a minute though, because I'm going to now put this on a coffee mug. So I need to size it differently. I need to scale it way down. And in order to do that, I want to group all of it together, grab the bottom corner here, double click and just push up a little bit until it is about three and a half inches wide. It can be a little more or a little less, that's fine, but right around three and a half to four inches usually for a coffee mug. Once it is the right size, we're going to ungroup it. I know this seems like a lot of back and forth, but if you try to scale a design without grouping it first, something's going to be left out and it's just gonna end up wonky. Okay, so now it's ungrouped. And because this design is smaller, we're going to be able to cut all of these colors at once We'll only have to send it through the machine one time. If we just separate our colors into the corners, at this point we can cut our vinyl accordingly. So this one will be with one inch by four inches. This one is four inches by three inches. And this one is one by four. All we need to do is cut the right color of vinyl the correct size for the image and place it in the corresponding corners. Once you have your design mat set up the way you want it, you can go up to the sun panel, click on that. You see all of the cut lines are lit up. That's exactly what we want. This time I'm going to select Vinyl Silhouette Oracle 651 from the drop down box. Last time I cut it out of HTV. The blade is set at a depth of one. If you're running a Cameo 4 or a Portrait 3, I highly suggest that you always bump your blade up by one. And that's all there is to it. You are ready to send this through your machine and cut out your vinyl. Okay, so we just covered a lot of information. We learned how to bring text into our designs and change the font. We learned how to change the color in different design elements. We use the offset tab and we use subtract all from the modify panel. 
and you can carry those skills with you throughout each and every design that you create from here on out. If you have any questions at all about what we covered in the video, go ahead and put them in the comments section below and I'll answer them as quickly as I possibly can. I will see you in the next video.